In this video, we're going to start looking at polar coordinates. So let's write this here, polar coordinates. Most of the work we've done in maths has been dealing with Cartesian coordinates in the xy plane. If we had something now in the xy plane, and I'll draw it up here, and we had a point P, let's put the point on here, P, what we would have, P would have coordinates x, comma, y. In polar form, the point P would have the uh, polar coordinates of R theta. Now, let's just get rid of the Cartesian ones. R is going to be the distance from the origin. And in this particular course, R is given as a non-negative value. In some courses, it will take a negative value. In this particular one, we do not have negative values of R. So it's the distance from the origin or the length of the pole. So that's one unit, two units, three units, four units, five units, six units, one unit, whatever, like so. All it is is a distance from the origin. Theta is the angle that the pole makes with the initial line. And the initial line is the x-axis here in this case. We measure anti-clockwise, generally in radians. So let's just look at that now. Theta often... Uh, in, in the, the book is or books is given to be from negative pi to positive pi inclusive of positive pi measured in radians not always the case um, but they're not uniquely defined um, so we generally say that the principal value is between negative and positive pi so for example now if this was an angle of pi by four and this had a length of six we could write this as six comma pi by four and that is now the polar form for that uh, set of coordinates. What we're going to do now is use autograph and look at a few examples of this and then come back and convert from Cartesian to polar form and vice versa. So what we've got here is some polar paper. You won't be expected to have any or um, be asked to draw it, but it'll give you some idea. These are the distances away from the origin, so the length of the pole, so one unit, two units, three, four and five and so on. And this is the angle that it's making with what we call the initial line. So let's put in a nice straightforward example. Let's start with three and then we'll do uh, pi by six. So we're working now and we'll put that there. So what we can see, it's making an angle with the initial line of pi by six and it's got a length of three. If we wanted, we could now, let's do another one, let's do um, four, so we can have four, and then we'll have two, and then we'll have pi by three, and then that'll be over there, okay? If we put one down here in a third or fourth quadrant, I have a feeling autograph in this mode, we'll put it as um, between zero and two pi, that's not an issue. Let's do three, and then let's do minus pi by three, which will probably give us five pi by three. So there we go, that's the distance from the origin, like so, and the uh, value that it's making with the initial line. So for example, now if we look at that one, we've got r is equal to three, feet is naught, and you can see down the left-hand side, this is gonna be changing. We've got now here, two and pi by four. We've got up here, we can do three and pi by two, four and pi by two, and so on. So those are polar coordinates. Okay, let's now look at working between Cartesian and polar form. X is given to be R cos theta. Y is given to be R sine theta. We know from our work with the basic Pythagoras or um, work with the circle, R is given to be the square root of X squared plus Y squared, or we could say R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. And then theta is given to be the inverse tangent of y over x. If you can work with this, this makes things so much more straightforward with our work. So what we're now going to do is just look at a couple of examples of plotting particular points. So we're asked to find the polar coordinates of the following points. So let's go for the first one. What we'll do, we'll put this up. So in Cartesian form, we would have now 5 comma 12. So what we've got is looking something like this. So at some point out here, um, let's grab that up. So it's across 5 at 12, so it looks something like so. What we need to find out first is r. And in the last section just then, we said that r was going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and take a positive value. So r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared, which is 5 squared, 25, 
plus y squared, which is 12 squared, which is 144. So r is going to be equal to root 169. r is going to be equal to 13. Let's now look. We're interested in this angle right now, theta. Theta is the inverse tangent now of y over x. So we want now the inverse tangent of 12 over 5. And we'll do this one in degrees. We can do it either in radians or degrees. It doesn't matter. And then we'll do inverse tangent now of uh, 12 divided by 5. And this will give us now our principal value. 67.4. So what we can do now is say that the polar coordinates are 13 comma 67.4 degrees or if you wanted to convert, convert that into radians which is more likely to be used you can do um, and that just that gives us our polar coordinates so there we go okay let's look at this one here uh, we'll do a couple of these what we've got on this one now is the following we're going to have uh, root 3 and then minus 1 so this is going to be down in the fourth quadrant just here so root 3 and then minus 1. So we want the value of r. r is a non-negative value. And r is going to be the square root of root 3 squared, which is 3, plus minus 1 squared, which is 1. So we can see that r is going to be equal to root of 4, or r is going to be equal to 2. We now want the angle. Now we're going to be working, I'll do this one in radians. We're interested in the angle that it's going to be making with the initial line. So let's consider what we've got. We've got the inverse tangent now. So tan to minus 1 of y over x, which is going to give us minus 1 over root 3. You may spot that as one of our known um, special angles, and that's going to give us minus pi by 6. So we could say now in polar form, this is going to be 2 comma minus pi by 6, or 2 comma minus 30 degrees. So all we've done is converted them. Okay, let's look at some more. Right, okay, so uh, where are we going now? What we want, these ones, Cartesian coordinates of the following points, angles measured in radians, that's fine. Okay, let's go back to our definitions then. X is equal to R cos theta y is equal to r sine theta so all we're going to do is sub this in so x is going to be equal to r well r is 6 on the first one and then we can have cos of pi by 6 now if we look at this cos of pi by 6 is root 3 over 2 so we can say x is going to be 6 lots of root 3 over 2 or x is going to be equal to what's that 3 root 3 let's now take y y is equal to r sine theta so 6 sine of pi by 6 so we're going to get y is going to be equal to 6 lots of pi by 6 is given as a half so we've got now 6 lots of a half so y is going to be equal to 3 so the cartesian coordinates are 3 root 3 comma 3 nice and straightforward all we're doing is plugging them in um let's do this one what we're going to have then is R, x is going to be equal to r cos theta, so x would be equal to 6 cos of minus pi by 6, and then y is going to be equal to 6 sine of minus pi by 6. So what we get on this one, x is going to be uh, now 6 lots, cos of negative pi by 6 is positive root 3 over 2, so that's going to give us 3 root 3, and then the sine of minus pi by 6 is minus a half, so we're going to get minus one half, which gives us minus three. So those ones, three root three, comma, minus three. And they're the Cartesian form. All we're doing is subbing them in. Okay, um, let's have a look at another one. Let's do this one. So on this one, what we've got is x is equal to r cos theta. Y is equal to r sine theta. And we just sub them in. So x is going to be equal to 10 cos of 5 pi by 4. And then y is going to be equal to 10 sine of 5 pi by 4. The sine of uh, and cosine of 5 pi by 4, both the same, it's going to be negative 1 over root 2. If we consider it's down here, okay, and what we end up with is a 1, 1 root 2, as that is pi by 4 or 45 degrees. So we can say x is going to be equal to 10 cos and you might want to rationalize this you could say negative it's going to be negative 1 over root 2 or you could say negative root 2 over 2 negative um uh, what i don't need to put cos again do i i've already written cos 
let's just put that in as the value rather than rewriting it and that's going to give me now uh, minus root 2 over 2 and then y is going to be 10 lots of the exactly the same minus root 2 over 2 so x is going to be minus 5 root 2 y is going to be minus 5 root 2 so coordinates negative 5 root 2 comma negative 5 root 2 and that's where we wind up so nice and straightforward um, should make some form of sense. All you're doing is plugging them in. Work off that basis and you should be fine. So there's a brief intro. Polar coordinates in the form R theta, where R is a non-negative value. Theta is the angle measured with what we call the initial line anti-clockwise, often given between negative and positive pi. In the next few videos, we'll look at converting von Cartesian to polar and then go on to some more interesting bits and bobs.